Jigsaw is back with his bag of party tricks for Saw 10, 19 whole years after the original movie. We've never been terribly hot in the Saw franchise, but this one got enough positive buzz that we're at least a little bit curious. Welcome everyone to Screams After Midnight, I am Peter and joining me as always is Tim. And I am ready to play a game. Will it be your last game? Hopefully. No, it's not. Saw 11's coming out later <laughs> this year. <laughs> That's true. So, yes, welcome everyone. It's a horror movie podcast. We get together, we talk about a horror film. It's quite that simple. And today, uh, at least for now, I'm sure there'll be some other 2023 movies that we'll go back and, like, do randomly when, you know, we, we, you know, like, we, we wanted to get to Cobweb, and I'm sure we'll go back and do it at some point. <laughs> but our final and our catch-up seasons, because we kind of need to start actually doing 2024 movies, which are becoming available, and we're kind of ignoring them to stick to these movies. We're mm -hmm. wrapping up uh, with Saw 10, or Saw X, or Socks, as I've heard some people <laughs> refer to, uh, which we, we kind of put off until last, but we knew we had to get to it. You know, we went through the first seven Saw movies in 2017 before Jigsaw Jesus. came out. <laughs> And then Saw 9, which was Spiral, the book of Saw, uh, mm -hmm. came out during the pandemic. And then obviously That's this right. came out in October. So this is the mm -hmm. 10th Saw movie. 11's on the way uh, in October, I believe. So, yes. But anyway, we'll start spoiler free, of course, as we always do. We'll give you warm mm -hmm. if we get spoilers. Just before we start, though, I'll just remind you that if you're enjoying the show and you're on YouTube, please do hit the like button. It helps us out a bunch if you do, more people will find us. And you can also get some bonuses and supporters over at Patreon. I'll tell you more about that at the end. But, just to set the scene here. We weren't in love with the Saw franchise. <laughs> Being very diplomatic, yeah. <laughs> we, you know, we, we, we were lukewarm on one and two. And then it kind of started to nosedive and i don't <laughs> think we really had much positive things to say about f three through nine <laughs> I, I think i want to say those aren't great numbers <laughs> no I, I think i want to say it bumped up a little bit for like five just because at least it was mm -hmm. like a bunch of characters in a room again but mm -hmm. other than that like we, we had a lot of negative things to say so color my surprise that's not a phrase Color me surprised. I think it's the phrase I was looking for. <laughs> when I saw that this had a positive Rotten Tomato score, yeah, <laughs> in October, I was like, "Wait, what? Did the first one even get a positive score? Like a fresh score?" <laughs> I never actually checked, but I'm not sure if it did. Um, I think like when the first one came out, I think there was enough people that it had a little bit of buzz, and I, I remember people like talking about it, uh, which. Yeah, I mean, at least the first one is, you know, doing something kind of or original or, or whatever, like, okay, just you know, at, at the I, time. I, I double checked. Is it 50%? So it is rotten. Okay. It's a high sure. rotten, <laughs> but it's a rotten. Mm -hmm. uh, I, no, I agree. There was buzz in the horror field, but I think the critics weren't as enamored sure. with mm -hmm. it. And to be fair, yeah. I don't blame them because we were also kind of critical of, yeah. of Saw and Saw 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but I was curious. I mean, if nothing else, I'm like, okay. You're this so is, curious. <laughs> this is getting good reviews. Mm -hmm. There must be something different about it. Something must be going on. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> so we're going to get to it. Uh, mm -hmm. This movie set, I believe, between Saw 2 and 3. Which makes sense. Because if I vaguely remember correctly, and, okay, as much as we're not doing spoilers for Saw 10 yet, mm -hmm broadly there be, might be some spoilers for saw one through nine okay <laughs> not a lot of it's going to so, come up but jigsaw or john kramer as he's like real name uh mm -hmm. he died at the end of saw three so this is mm -hmm. definitely set before saw three yeah uh I, I was a little confused about that so like at some point probably halfway through the movie or so i i did a quick google just to see when this was supposed to take place and mm. i think that the first result I got said it was between one and two, which I for stuff that happens in the movie that didn't really make sense uh, to me. But maybe I, I just really looked really quickly at like the first thing that popped up. So it might have not been accurate. Sure. Well, 
Well, it's between one and two or two or three, and I don't remember those movies well enough to like sp- spot minor details that That's, give it away. Yeah, so uh, there's one big question uh, I have about it, which we'll have to talk about in spoilers. But um, yeah, I mean, other than that, though, there's not a lot. Like, it, I if you had a gun to my head and you know forced me to describe like what happens in pretty much any of these movies, it's not the first one. Um, yeah, I, I probably wouldn't <laughs> fare it too well. Uh, like, I, I remember uh, some minor stuff to, about the second after that, though. Yeah, I just remember that in a flashback in like Saw 4 or 5, I don't know which one it was, mm-hmm. they tried to show us John Kramer about 20, 30 years ago, and to show that he was younger, they put <laughs> a backwards baseball cap on him, and that was it. They called it a day. <laughs> he was literally doing Hello Fellow Kids uh, in a Saw flashback. That's what I remember. To be fair, I do enjoy that than, like, I don't know, giving us a weird CGI jigsaw or something. True, true. <laughs> well, what's funny is that here, um, you know, it's it, it's been 20 years since Saw 1. Uh, mm-hmm. It's been almost 20 years since Saw 2 and 3. And mm-hmm. I, I can't really say much of this until spoilers, but I'll just say there's definitely some ages that are inconsistent now <laughs> with when this mm-hmm. is supposed to be set, and we'll talk about sure. that. Um, <laughs> but, yeah... Honestly, I feel like most of the premise of this movie is kind of a spoiler because it kind of yeah. it, it it takes a good half hour doing a lot of setup for what this movie's premise is, which is why the movie's about two hours long. Which you know maybe we'll be critical on, but I can't deny that it, this is a if, very very different setup than any other Saw movie. I mean, I, I guess if you want a, a spoiler free synopsis, I would just say. Jigsaw puts some people in some traps. <laughs> that does happen. I can't deny that happens. <laughs> but, I mean, the first half hour is more like a drama following John Kramer, sure. who's dying of cancer. Mm-hmm. It's very mm-hmm. different from a lot of the others, which is weird, because I just looked up the director before we started. Uh, Kevin mm-hmm. uh, Gruter, uh, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, um, mm-hmm. he directed Saw 4 and Saw 7. Two classics. <laughs> he also directed Jackals, which we reviewed. And I will, you know what, Tim? I'll give you a cookie if you can tell me what Jackals was, because we reviewed it on the show. I, okay, so I want to say it was, you're probably going to have to give me a cookie because I'm pretty sure I know this. It was like uh, someone was in a cult and they, her family takes her to a remote cabin to deprogram her and then the cult members try to find her. That's. I mean, that's more than I remember. I just remembered it was uh, <laughs> there was Mass in uh, one of the Baldwins, or not Baldwins, what was his name? Mm-hmm. I forget his name, the actor. Stephen Dorff, that was the dude. Uh, I want to say, yeah, it's like it ends up being like a home invasion movie with like yes. a cult member. Okay, so. I'm, sh- I'm shocked. I'm shocked you remembered that. <laughs> but yeah, he did that, and that was shit too, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, not happy I remember it. <laughs> so just to show, again, painting a picture, painting a picture mm-hmm. this, so, all right. I guess we'll we'll, we'll get the the, the 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 general impressions out of the way, and then we'll <clears> we'll, we'll start digging in. Tim, what did you think of yeah. Saw Ten? Uh, so similar to what you were saying, I I was actually somewhat excited to watch this. Uh, I I would go as far to say that I hate this franchise. Um, <laughs> the <laughs> I yeah I, I would say the first two are the the most watchable, but I think they still have their faults. Uh, at the core, I do like the idea and the premise of, yeah, uh, a horror guy puts these dudes in these gnarly traps. Uh, there's, I think there's a lot of fun. I don't remember Sorry. what we said, but I'm sure we probably said that when we did, oh, sure. yeah. saw one and probably saw two and three and four and so yeah. on. <laughs> uh, the, I, I, I like that idea. The problem is, is that I just... It, uh, the the direction the look of these movies uh, i think is so awful and then it's so up its own arse with uh its continuity and its lore and it's just so like it takes itself so seriously and, and it's not fun and i i mean i know there are people that like love this and i don't know I, I wish i could enjoy it with them but it's just always like painful trying to watch it but regardless like you said this one was getting some buzz and there were some people uh people i know that were saying that they actually really liked it and people some some were even saying it's like the best in the franchise so i i didn't think i was going to love it but i was at least a little hopeful that okay maybe this will be the one that kind of turns it around a little bit and i'm like oh okay this is kind of this is dumb but it's fun or whatever 
Um, and then, yeah, pretty quickly <laughs> into the movie, I just realized that wasn't going to be the case. <laughs> uh, it, I guess if I want to be a little positive, I would agree that, yes, this is one of the better Saw movies. But again, I hate the Saw movies. Uh, I think they're pretty much garbage, garbage, if you will. Oh, uh, so it's like, oh, whale since you up that one. <laughs> so it's like, okay, so this is like maybe a little better than the typical saw trash. Like I, I I'll, like I, I guess some positives uh, is like, um, you know, I, I do like Tobin Bell. I, I think you know he does a good job with this character. Uh, but uh, so you know, it, it was fun to see him uh and then there were moments that i did actually laugh at some uh absurd stuff which um i, I guess to keep it spoiler free like th there'd be times when we'd see him like having these like <laughs> kind of like daydreams or see him like sketching stuff on some pieces of paper and like stuff like that made me laugh uh because just like it, having this like you know horror villain but like you said it's kind of like living this you know drama <laughs> which, which is kind of like novel and funny to me um but again the, those parts were kind of few and far in between uh there was like some over the topness with some of the characters and, and stuff and uh, you know i guess i'll give it credit where like the, you know the gore was pretty good um so yeah there there are some positive stuff to be had you know i, I just don't want to be super negative about the whole thing but uh the problems that i have with the franchise is all still very much here you know in this movie uh i, I think it just like it just looks like shit like it doesn't look like i'm surprised this was like re released theatrically like because it, it always looks like i don't know it should be like a straight to tbs <laughs> like tv movie <laughs> or, or something i just don't think the quality is good you know that um and uh the like Shit was <laughs> kind of losing my train of thought. I'm oh, going to talk like, about the whole movie too. You don't have to get it all out yeah, right yeah. now. You, you, you can hold something back. Yeah. It's fine. And then uh, we, we're talking about like you know, like not knowing when it takes place and like you know that there's so much continuity stuff that like you know I, I don't mind if you want to have like a bunch of lore and continuity like that's totally fine. But it shouldn't be to the detriment of, of the movie. Like I, I, I don't know. I, I feel like there's so much stuff that you have to remember and then be like. Oh, wait, who's this person again? And all right, so what would they have been doing at this time between these movies? Like, yeah, it, it just takes me out of the movie. It's not like, uh, I mean, maybe if I was a super fan of the series, that stuff would be like, you know, uh, catnip or, or whatever to you. Um, but I don't know, just as someone that doesn't really like this stuff, it just uh, feels more like a hindrance than a, a plus uh, for the movies. And and it's so long it was almost two hours i was like are you kidding me like the, 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 you should have just really uh quickened this and then yeah the, there's more stuff i i didn't like but yeah we'll, we'll we'll get into it so that's how i feel about it i mean i guess i'm more positive than you i'm not saying i loved it <laughs> but i do see a legitimate difference between this especially mm. on a script level and most of the previous movies it's a lot more mm competent as a script mm -hmm. like it sets up the character it sets up all of the characters who are going to be involved in the game it gives mm -hmm. you an understanding to some extent who they all are why they're in the mm -hmm. game and instead of like trying to do like lots of twists and little because you know the first movie and a lot of the movies in the franchise do the thing where oh they're mm -hmm. here and we're going to get it revealed slowly that they're bad people and they've done these things and that's why mm -hmm. jigsaw has targeted them here, it treats it very differently in a way where you kind of just understand what the motivations are before anything gets going. Um, and it does some interesting things with that kind of throughout. I, like, I'm not saying it solves all of the problems that this franchise has, because it doesn't. But I will say, I do think the annoying direction is toned down. It wasn't as... Like, oh, we're going to spin around, sped up like a music video like, right. every time. Like, there's, I mean, there's a little bit of the quick cuts and a little bit of the mm -hmm. speed up in the, the, the trap scenes, but it, it's definitely toned. It's, it's almost like they at least realized, you know what, it's not 2005 anymore. Uh, <laughs> this style is, is more great and we're going to rein it in. Mm -hmm. So I'll give it that. There was some moments I liked. There was some gore that I thought was ridiculously over the top that I did get some chuckles out of now having said all this i'm not saying that i thought this was a great movie i i but i do think it's it, it it was a lot more watchable than i think 
almost any of the other Saw movies were. So I guess I technically agree it's maybe the best Saw movie, but mm. that's with the caveat that the bar is <laughs> pretty low. You know, like, I'm not mm-hmm. like I'm not standing here and defending it, but I do I do think there is a de- definitive difference between this and a lot of the other ones. Now, admittedly, mm-hmm. when we get into spoilers, I'm going to question <laughs> maybe <laughs> like. <laughs> some of the ways that it does that, some of the ways that it does something different where it gives you more characters to potentially care about mm-hmm. is certainly questionable and something that I would compare to another movie as well, which again, I can't talk about until spoilers. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> there appears to be a child in a saw trap yes. in your house, Tim, right now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we've been uh, <laughs> dealing with some bedtime stuff. <laughs> Why it doesn't agree with bedtime? Huh? No, no. <laughs> uh, yes, well, I'll uh, change. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, I, I don't disagree with you. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm still pretty negative about this movie, but I mean, I do agree. It is uh, a step in the right direction. It's definitely a more watchable. Than the other ones i there's still a lot of stuff i don't like about it i still have problems with it but um yeah i mean i, I would give it at least that basic you know i mean i'll, I'll put it this courtesy. way i did mm-hmm. because it was interesting to see them do something mm-hmm. different with saw which is why it surprised me mm-hmm. it was from a director who did like four and seven two of the worst ones um <laughs> this genuinely was a more interesting and therefore entertaining watch then I would say half the things we've done from mm-hmm. 2023 in the last few months. Mm. <sighs> I mean, I don't want to <laughs> agree with you, but I that, don't think like, I, this, I, this did not bore me. As, is hard. <laughs> yeah, this did not bore me as much as last Voyage of the Demeter. It, mm. um, what else did we do? <laughs> I'm forgetting them all now. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah okay this is they're all gone they're all they've all left yeah. my brain oh god <laughs> doing the, 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 the best list is going to be going to be rough um yeah yeah like like the, yeah I, I, anyway the, the, the... i was I, something I, i'll also uh, agree with you too is yeah I, I do think they hit on something here that is a lot more entertaining which is you know the, the idea of um kind of making jigsaw the a little bit more of like he's the protagonist <laughs> yeah yeah instead of being like the villain like obviously he's still doing messed up stuff he's, but then he's a hitting sim- him <laughs> he's a sympathetic hero in this one it's weird yeah like you you pit him against <laughs> cartoonishly evil like you know to the point where like a uh, what ends up kind of being the main person he's going after and they're doing like you know, Saturday morning, like villain levels of like cartoonishly evilness, uh, like uh, like this is pretty entertaining, uh, versus you know like some of the early movies where it's just like, you know, I don't know, he's going after like a guy that cheats on his wife or something like that. Eh, like it seems like a little bit extreme, uh, or like someone that's just addicted to drugs <laughs> or something like, uh, kind of making him the anti-hero and going up against like yeah, legitimately like bad or evil don't, people and kind of making you root don't for Don't get yeah. me wrong, though. There are moments where he'll criticize someone else and I'm like, okay, yeah, but you put people in traps that, like, make yeah. them <laughs> soft limbs and shit. Like, I don't think you've got the moral high ground here, Mr. Kramer. Yeah. I'm sorry to say. But, actually, the thing I was making me think of a little bit was how Don't Breathe 2 uh, mm-hmm. tried to make that character, like, the hero of the movie. That's a bit more, more tough. <laughs> but it's kind of in that ballpark, though, where, yeah. like, wait, I, that, yeah. this is the villain. This was the guy who was behind everything, and now he's kind of the main <laughs> character. But I can't deny that it was more of an interesting watch mm-hmm. because of that, and it was sure, definitely yeah. slower paced, which, you know, despite the length maybe mm-hmm. being a bit too much, and I kind of agree mm-hmm. with that, I do think these movies need to slow down. They were too kind of hyperkinetic. Um, and mm-hmm. I actually, I will slightly disagree with one thing you said, which is you have okay. to kind of be aware of like, and remember certain things. And I'm like, I actually think one of the strengths this movie has is that honestly, like, it's almost like it wants you to just forget the rest of them exist after mm-hmm. like two or three, 
because it's like no this is simple yes there's people that might show up that he you know mm-hmm. from those movies but for the most part it's all self-contained like it's it's actually mm-hmm. kind of surprising how little of it even remotely implies or connects to anything in those movies it's to the point where it's actually really hard to believe that all this happened between two and three mm-hmm. but it is so <laughs> self-contained where it's all set up and the story's wrapped up and it's all done and not, nothing it's not like he's like casually making some traps for the third movie in the background or something you know <laughs> at one point or, or anything like that so and i mean well i i guess it's going to come down to a a personal thing if you know your mind can kind of let that go like uh what i mean there's other movies where like this kind of stuff wouldn't bother me but it was just like when i'm seeing these characters and stuff that i know um yeah from other movies like i can't help but think about okay so how exactly does this fit into the timeline and it's like yeah you don't need well, to know them to yeah enjoy but you the movie, say that but... tim but you've already admitted you don't remember any of the timeline so how <laughs> could you possibly even obsess over it <laughs> well because i'm trying to figure out like when it was like just because i can't remember something doesn't mean like i'm just gonna be like oh i can't remember it so i'm gonna let it go like no it's bothering me because i don't remember it and i want to figure it out ah uh... I guess I just don't care enough. I just, <laughs> I just don't care enough about. I mean, it's a personal yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I, I mean, there's definitely some mm. quirks that come from how this movie's supposed to fit into two movies mm-hmm. that were almost twenty years old. But like, I just, I, I don't mean, think <laughs> that's something that really. I, I think one of the mm. smartest things this movie probably did. Right. It, okay. Mm. Yeah. Obviously, step one, they decide to make this movie. There's obviously like a hurdle they have to just sort of <laughs> accept to get over, which is, oh, it's kind of weird that we're doing this 20 years later and everyone's older mm-hmm. and it doesn't make mm-hmm. any sense. But whatever, we want Jigsaw back and he was, he's been dead in the movies for like seven movies. We just kind of have to do it this way. And I mean, they really like there. shot themselves in the foot with <laughs> by like killing them so early on. Like, Yeah, but his whole thing was he was dying of cancer. <laughs> that was like his whole... right character motivation <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll just make him supernatural at some like at some point he sure yeah. a, a genie <laughs> granted his wish and brought him back from the dead or something <laughs> honestly the ridiculously convoluted nature of some of the <laughs> like traps and plans he has he might as well be supernatural sometimes yeah uh i'm not even necessarily meaning this movie but there's definitely other times where like God, the amount of like lists of things he left for other people to do after he died <laughs> for saw four through eight or whatever is <laughs> just absolutely absurd <sighs> oh, I'm, and the funny thing is though is like you know the, we so often like you know we rather enjoy like you know bad and cheesy movies so like i don't know it, it, in another way i i can see laughing at all the you know kind of not necessarily just this movie but like you know the whole franchise just how forced it feels like you know trying to, to bring him stuff back like uh i don't know i i feel like that should be funnier well i think that me, but that goes yeah. back to what you were saying about it taking itself too seriously and like yeah. the tone of it and like the the style of it that's the things that stop because yeah i can see a world where the general broad strokes of everything that's happened in all these movies remains the same but it's more just like a oh this is a funny b movie that i can laugh along with and mm-hmm. enjoy like an 80 slasher movie and just enjoy the absurd gore and traps but right uh it kind of gets in its own way uh, a bit and obviously people who love it love the convoluted like (laughs) mythology and just how more weird and unbelievable it gets as those sequels go on (laughs) uh this is uh, actually do we know right now uh if 11 is like a sequel to this where it's still going to be set before he's dead so we can still have jigsaw (laughs) i mean that's a great question uh i would imagine so because again i just feel like he's such a, a driving force of the movies that I mean, they're gonna want him especially like this one seemed to do pretty well so they're probably i mean that that's why we're getting yeah. 11 a year later like, yeah. like <laughs> I, I just in this very movie they say he's only got a few months left to live and it's hard to believe <laughs> that he's able to do everything in this movie in that span of time yeah. never mind set up saw three so <laughs> you're telling me there's going to be another like this was like three this was like 2.1 so we're going to get 2.2 next time <laughs> how many movies are you going to squeeze into this little few month gap <laughs> that's a great question <laughs> there'll be a, a whole uh trilogy between like there'll be like three trilogies 
within the first trilogy. <laughs> it's almost like, you know, okay, you got Tobin Bell back. Why don't you just say this is like a reboot where mm -hmm. he actually is going to just live now and just go from there? Like, if you really want to keep doing more sequels, just do that. You know what I would do is bring in Kristen Bell, the daughter of Jigsaw. <laughs> Why does it matter if the actor's last name is the same as the character's last name? It's not even like the actor's name. Oh, that is the actor's name, sorry. But, like, why does it matter that they've got the same last name? And the movie's not called Bell. It, it's just great PR. You just, like, imagine, like, the poster, like, Bell versus Bell. Wait, they're against each other now? I thought, I thought it was, she was continuing his work. And what, what's her name going to be? Kristen Kramer? <laughs> maybe they can get a tie into Krispy Kreme yeah. Kristen Kramer goes to Krispy Kreme and traps someone with some killer donuts Ooh. and watch it <laughs> <laughs> or eat it whatever it is <laughs> little column A little column B yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah I don't know that's, that's well so I... <laughs> I know his name is John Kramer but I don't know, whenever anyone just says like Kramer! I just, I can't help but think of Seinfeld. True, true, yes. <laughs> if you say Kramer, that's what I think of, but they always yeah. say John Kramer in full, so it never, it never, like, goes there for me in my head. There was, there was, like, once or twice where, like, one of the guys was yelling, Kramer! <laughs> and that was making me laugh. <laughs> You're expecting just someone at the door to show up and go, yeah. human. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um... Yeah, uh, okay, is there anything I want to say before we go to spoilers? Um, you know, as always with these movies, there's going to be like a like a, a reveal towards the end where the main theme mm -hmm. kicks in, because they all have that moment. Mm -hmm. Ever since the first one, where that, that Zep theme kicks in, mm -hmm. and yeah, and you know, we'll, we'll talk about if that works or not. I mean, this definitely wasn't one of its more ridiculous mm -hmm. twists, but... Uh, Probably not its best either. It's kind of somewhere in the middle, I would say. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Spoilers then. Uh, mm -hmm. For Saw Ten or Saw X, you have been warned. We're gonna uh, we're gonna get into it. Uh, so yeah, the first twenty five thirty minutes of this Tim is a drama about a dying man. <laughs> and to be honest, because the way they were treating it for a good like fifteen twenty minutes, I genuinely wasn't sure if he'd already been active as Jigsaw or if this is the build up until he starts being active as mm -hmm. Jigsaw. Until yeah. he goes to like the retreat and she's asking him what he does and he's like, Oh well this is my profession, but uh I help people uh find a new meaning in life and I'm like, Oh you have been Jigsaw, okay. You you have been putting people in traps. Saw one and two has happened already. Okay. Fair enough, because <laughs> uh, I generally wasn't sure, but it's it's a lot of like yeah. him sitting sad, piano music, uh, all that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. That said, though, they do something. I, I, I'll I'll call this smart, where they realize mm -hmm. shit. There's not going to be any saw action for like forty minutes, so we're going to have mm -hmm. them daydream about one <laughs> in the first <laughs> ten, just so the audience isn't bored. <laughs> this is I I did think this was legitimately funny, just because like. Um, yeah, j just the idea of, like, him, like, sadly going around and just, like, kind of, like, listlessly looking at, at people and, like, daydreaming, like, ah, wish I could kill that guy. <laughs> like, Well, all the people who have done something wrong, though. I mean, that's... that's well, yeah, of course, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, cause, well, this is what I was thinking, is that when he has this daydream, I was like, oh, is this him just getting the ideas to do what he does? or is? Mm -hmm. But obviously it turns out, no, he's already doing it. He's just thinking specifically mm -hmm. what his punishment would be. Uh, so, yeah, so yeah, it's a custodian mm -hmm. at the hospital who's, like, thinking about stealing the jewellery and the watch <laughs> and stuff out this, like, patient's drawer because the patient's <laughs> in, like, a cast and can't move mm -hmm. and he's unconscious. And, like, we go into... I mean, you, know, you don't even notice in his head at first. You think he might just be flashing forward, but... Uh, mm -hmm. This guy's in a contraption uh, with similar things that the, the patient was in, but he's got tubes going to his eyes. It's kind of what they <laughs> use for the poster. But basically, the, the tubes in his eyes are connected to a very, very powerful vacuum cleaner, which are going to suck out his eyeballs if he doesn't press mm -hmm. all these buttons. But each time he presses a button, his other hand, his finger gets broken. So he mm -hmm. only gets through a couple of them before he can't do it anymore. And we do get to see his eyeballs go swoosh 
through the troops and into a jar. And uh, I kind of wish there was more stuff like this because I thought this was like a legitimately fun uh, and, and kind of different trap. Um, uh, I I feel like there's so many traps that are just like a lot of times like someone's sitting somewhere or they have to like cut something off or cut something out. And mm, there's a lot of that, uh, yeah, across the the board, yeah. yeah. And they and and admittedly, like you, know, you kind of said before, like there's some good gore and stuff. Like they usually look pretty good, like to be fair. But it's just, I don't know. I just feel like there's so much like different stuff you can do. I, I like when it gets like a little bit more creative, uh, like this. And then um, I do think <laughs> it's funny that you know he snaps out of his daydream and you see the guy putting his watch back and the uh, you know <laughs> jigsaw's like a. Uh, you know, good choice. <laughs> <laughs> you just saved your life. You don't even know it, yeah. but you just saved your life. I mean, I think... Hey, it kind of makes you wonder if he's ever been, like, too hasty and, like, you know, grab someone, <laughs> like, before they really did anything. I mean, to me, the uh, the comical thing about all of it was, one, the idea that a regular vacuum cleaner would be powerful enough to actually <laughs> suck out eyeballs, but yeah. two, every so often while this trap was playing out, it would cut to a shot of what was effectively a hen with a hoover just kind of like, sh you know, <laughs> shambling from side to side <laughs> because it was sucking in stuff through the tubes. And that just yeah. made me laugh. I thought that was funny. So, uh, yeah. And uh, I, I do like the, there's like poetic justice with like, you know, because he's like, oh, like this will solve your sticky finger situation. So it's like, oh, okay, I get it. Now he has to break his fingers, but I don't really know why. Like, where's the irony in the eyes getting sucked out? Oh, because he's like, his eyes were, like... You know, because he was, like, eyeing things up. He was, like, seeing something he wanted to steal. Like, he's, you know, like his eyes were too big for his stomach kind of thing. Mm, I don't know, I guess. <laughs> the temptation. Like, I get it. I mean, like, mm. not everything's going to link to the crime, Tim, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, if it was just that, you could just walk in right now with a hammer and just hit him a couple times in the hand and be like, right, that, that's, that's it, that's your own good. You've learned a lesson now. And so that I really like. I like the idea of, uh, like, a, a jigsaw that is just, like, maybe he just doesn't have as much money anymore. He just kind of has to really, like, cut back a lot. And <laughs> it's just like, all right, I'll just stab you a few times. I will actually, that. more than that later, but, like, with, with the first jigsaw thing he does about, like, half an hour later... I actually kind of liked that it was a lot more like hastily put together. Like it was just duct tape oh, and a sure. pipe bomb. Yeah. Like it was a lot more <laughs> simple because he had to like do it quickly on the spot as opposed to something he was planning for weeks. I kind of appreciated mm -hmm. that little detail. Uh, but yeah, the first part of this movie after like he gets the news that he's only got a few months to live basically um, mm -hmm. is that it's about him going to like support groups and he hears these other people's stories which leads to him seeing one of these people from the support groups, but looking better. And it turns out this guy got like this experimental fancy new treatment, right? And he gets the information from him. He looks up the website, he gets in touch. And this first half hour is about him going to Mexico where this like kind of illegal, but experimental like surgery medication, which has reportedly saved other people from terminal illnesses. He's going there and it's all played very nice where he's taken there. I mean, it's, it's a little bit sus the way they take him there because they have, like... So he doesn't know how to get there. There's, like, mass men with guns sort of take him as if it's, like, a like a kidnapping. But mm -hmm. when he gets there, everyone's really nice. He meets multiple people. Gabrielle, who's, like, the woman's house that they're sort of hiding out in. Um, he meets this kid. He meets all the people working there, doctor, nurses, all that stuff. And it's all about... He even sees a previous patient on his way out sort of saying that he's happy, that it seems like his his thing's gone, he's got he had throat cancer and it's all gone now. And builds up to the surgery and then ultimately he's told, Hey, we did surgery and your head's fine. Like you can go. Um here's some medication. You're all fine. And it's only because Jigsaw is so thrilled, right? <laughs> that they've saved his life and he likes he wants to thank these people, specifically the women who was running the house, Gabrielle, uh, she offered him a drink while he was there. So he went and bought her a bottle of this local drink. I, I don't even remember what it was, but it was like a, I don't know, a local gin or something. Um, he uses his skills as an engineer to work out where he was staying because he can see this like power tower or like this, or whatever it is in the, in the distance. And he's able to triangulate <laughs> where, the, where the, the compound was. And he goes there 
And when he gets there, there's like broken frames and stuff. And there's been, clearly it's like something's went wrong here. There's been a struggle or something. And I thought where this was going mm -hmm. is that something bad's happened to these people and he's going to like <laughs> go and be Jigsaw to avenge them. Mm -hmm. What it actually is, it's a revenge story because when he finds the little area where they were doing medical stuff on him, uh, mm -hmm. It turns out the footage of like his brain being cut into it was actually just a tape. <laughs> it wasn't real. <laughs> he takes off his bandage. There's no wound. He's been conned. Mm -hmm. These people have conned Jigsaw out of 250 grand. <laughs> and for a few hours, he thought he was going to live. But now mm -hmm. he realizes he's still dying. So this movie is a revenge story. It's they pissed <laughs> off Jigsaw and he's going to come for them. <laughs> uh yeah actually it, it is a, a generally a, a pretty good premise i, I do like kind of how like convoluted it is but also it is kind of like very cheap where it's just like yeah just kind of drug him and then when he wakes up we'll just like play this uh like surgery video so he thinks that like we're uh you know doing his head and stuff um uh, one thing I do just want to uh, correct you on uh, oh. is because uh, I, I think you said the and I, I was just double checking it on my phone to make sure. But um, I think the main woman is uh, Cecilia, I believe, not Gabrielle. I didn't say the I mean, main Gabrielle. woman. No, no. The woman who oh. was in the house, who was staying, who, they said it was her house that they were staying at. Oh, OK. I, I thought you were talking about like the, the woman in charge. No, no. The woman in charge, okay, Cecilia, okay. she's the, the, the main doctor yeah. lady. Yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. She, she's Cecilia Peterson, <clears throat> mm -hmm. which that's a really unfortunate. Peterson sounds like you're saying <laughs> Peterson. son. <laughs> Peterson. Yeah, uh, actually, I have a very good friend whose last name is Peterson. Well, pass on. I think his name sounds dodgy. <laughs> Will you? <laughs> Should be on a list. Um, there, I don't know. There, there is something that's very funny about how. I don't know bland the names are but then I, I don't know like the the way they yell them it, it, it's just like kind of funny to me like the whoever the the guy that ends up showing later is like Parker Sears or something like that oh yeah he was the previous patient that uh, yeah. John met sort of on his way inside yeah it's just like such like a dumb boring name but then just when they're like yelling it with like you know such like passionate conviction like parker sears like i don't know that just kind of makes me laugh yeah i mean I, I have to say like the first half hour does go a little slow but when it got to this point and i realized what it was doing where it was like okay not only have they are they doing something wrong and they've clearly conned mm -hmm. other people out of money uh because we see how uh, the main lady peterson how she's living she's got a really nice fancy house with all mm -hmm. these glass you know, walls, you know, looking mm -hmm. out. I mean, windows is what the... You know what I mean? It's like, like the entire <laughs> like wall at the backyard is all glass. It's all uh, that. So um, we, we see how much money they're making from this, right? And everyone's in on it. Everyone who was there working with her, even the cab driver was in on it who, who picked him up at the airport. Um, and I was thinking the guy that from his support group must have been in on it. And they never mentioned that throughout mm -hmm. the movie, but obviously it does come up in the mid-credit scene yeah. if Tim watched the mid-credit scene. I did. Yeah. Okay, just checking. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I was like, okay, this is an interesting premise. And he goes after the cab driver because he's the one that he can find because he knows that he picks mm -hmm. up people at the airport. So he finds him and he gets like a makeshift trap where he's got like just duct tape around the guy's hands and he's got scalpels sticking out of the duct tape and he's got pipe bombs sort of stapled mm -hmm. into his skin on both arms. And it's like, hey, you can't cut through mm -hmm. the cable that I've used to cut uh, to stick them to you, but... You can cut around the flesh on the outside and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but the most important thing here though, is that this is how he gets who everyone else is. Mm -hmm. So he's called in the, 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 the cavalry is the word I was looking for. And, <laughs> uh, basically there's like, a, there's like a, a series of scenes where we see the four individuals that are, he wants revenge on all being like taken in sort of from their various locations. So, mm -hmm. uh, we get you know, Gabriella, we find out, is someone who's addicted to drugs. She's getting stuff from Matteo, the guy who was pretending to be the doctor. He works at a vet and he gives her drugs. And we see her get nabbed in a bathroom, uh, which is trying to hide from suspicious footsteps. Um, <laughs> Matteo gets nabbed as well. Uh, the other woman who was pretending to be the nurse, uh, Valentina, uh, she's working as a prostitute at a nightclub and she gets grabbed. 
Uh, and then ultimately it builds up to uh, Peterson because she's like the big bad and she's like in her big fancy house. I actually really mm-hmm. liked how they did this scene at the end. Um, this was cool, yeah. I thought I thought the visual of like, uh, I don't know what you call it when like Jigsaw or in this case Amanda are wearing like the the mask or whatever. But, like the pig mask. Yeah. yeah, the pig mask. But she's looking at the security cameras and she can see her on the roof of her house. Mm-hmm. just walking silently across i actually thought that was a cool visual and then just like the dropping the boulder and it just goes all the way through the glass into the into the room she's in i thought that was neat. yeah I, yeah I, I mean as much as i don't like you know a lot of the um like the look and the direction of this stuff i admittedly better than the other movies but i i will admit this was actually a pretty like cool effective looking you know way they shot this I mean, I think in general, these all stood out as being better compared to the old movies, but mm-hmm. this is the one that actually felt yeah. just flat out good, whereas the others were just right. good mm-hmm. in comparison. But I didn't feel like they weren't doing... Because I, I remember all the old scenes where you'd get like a flashback mm-hmm. to when someone was kidnapped by Jigsaw or one of his helpers, mm-hmm. and it would always be these quick flashes and like all this erratic MTV shit. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And I, I do just kind of like changing the, the locations up a bit, because I feel like so much of the franchise just takes place in like these dirty graffiti yeah you know abandoned warehouses and stuff which admittedly that's kind of where we're, we're going into just a big empty warehouse but like um but yeah at least seeing something here like a little different like yeah seeing them you know go to these different places was a bit interesting and so and uh, and i do actually like the uh <laughs> the the pig mask look i, I was kind of happy when i i saw that coming back sure uh it, it is so funny that like jigsaw has like multiple like identities like he has like the pig man uh just himself and then like the doll <laughs> like all right yeah um i think w- where i think this movie kind of like works in a way that a lot of the others didn't is that this was a lot more interesting starting off them like all waking up in the room and they're all chained to various things mm-hmm. because they've set up context for all of it like Mm -hmm. jigsaw is our main character and he has a reason to want revenge and also his idea of justice which is you know giving them this lesson which they may Mm -hmm. or may not survive from again the classic complaints always there though that some of them are like okay technically they can survive but like Mm -hmm. is is missing a leg or like brain matter really like much of a (laughs) i don't know it it feels like you're setting them up to fail by and large i mean i i think i've said this before but uh if i was ever in one of these traps i would just I, I just run out the clock. I, I'm like, yeah, sorry. I, I don't think I can do this to myself. I would just uh, try and give him my best riddle and then not give him the answer and then he'd have to save me. Uh, if he wants <laughs> no, to I really here. know. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you're, you're, you're going to get the, the answer to this if you let me live. Oh, well. <laughs> but no, I think there's a lot of context going into this. So right away, mm-hmm. just compare it to the previous movies, there was just like more of a definitive like, okay, I understand why they're all here. I understand what his motivations are. And as a revenge movie, whether or not you think Jigsaw is like a good guy or not, right, which is definitely up for <laughs> debate, at least you understand like in the context of this that he is the better of the evils. That they kind of and obviously one of the things the movie does from this point on is that Peterson, the woman, they make sure that the audience all think that she is just straight up evil, right? By the time Absolutely. by the time you get to act three of this movie, everyone's rooting for Jigsaw against her because mm-hmm. she is the the worst. Yeah. out of the two of them <laughs> like by far so mm-hmm. uh yeah so also the fact that he's just standing in the room with them when mm-hmm. they all wake up is very different which I, I think is like the movie's way of trying to tell you this is more personal like obviously mm-hmm. he still leaves some tape recordings and stuff but the idea that he's even there to greet them when they wake up is like oh he never does that he's always like mm-hmm. behind the wall or something or he's watching from afar or Okay, maybe he's pretending to be dead in the middle of the room, but he's not like talking to them. <laughs> Whereas mm-hmm. he's letting them all know who he is. He's making it clear, mm-hmm. hey, you f but the wrong serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> Asterix technically he makes them kill themselves. Blah 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 blah. Uh, I I I love whenever they bring that up. Like we don't kill. Like well, I uh, guess on a extremely technical level, sure. <laughs> Yeah, you put a handgun in a two-year-old's mm. hand. You're taking the blame <laughs> for, for for anything that happens, okay? Right. Just just, just the way it, way it is. So this is obviously where it reveals that Amanda's there and she's been doing all the heavy lifting. 
And this is the this is the this is where the age problem really comes in because <laughs> Tobin Bell obviously he's also twenty years older, but he already had grey hair. He already looked pretty old mm -hmm. even back in Saw One. Shawnee Smith was in her early to mid thirties when Saw mm -hmm. was made, right? So in her mm -hmm. like movies, which was Saw One, Two, Three, and then she was mostly gone after that. I think. I mean, people could correct me if I'm wrong, but that was mainly the one she mm -hmm. was in. She is now in her early to mid fifties. There is a huge difference, like on someone's mm -hmm. face, between thirty three and fifty three, and it's impossible not to see it. It's impossible not to look at her face and go, "You're, you know, old enough to like, whatever." I, like she just does not look like the same character. She looks very different. Uh, I do admire their strategy of giving her this ridiculously bad haircut to try to distract <laughs> you. Like, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to sound uh, like mean or, or talk about someone's looks, but I, I just thought that haircut was awful. I was like, what did, are they thinking? <laughs> did she have a haircut like that in Saw 3, maybe? Is that what, is it just trying to match that? Maybe, if it's called, maybe. Um, I right, don't so, remember. So here was, uh, <laughs> well, here was part of my big confusion because, um, like I said, uh, you know, at, at some point in the movie, I, I was like, all right, so when the heck does this take place? And the the first Google result I got said between one and two, which confused me because I was like, OK, well, I remember her character was, you know, the big character in two. But I and I know that she ends up working with Jigsaw, but uh, I mean, maybe I'm forgetting if there's like a twist at two that she was working with him beforehand. But yeah, you I are. Thought, no, you, you're forgetting that because. You see her as an example of a previous victim that survived in Saw mm -hmm. 1, and Saw 2, the big thing is, is that she's a previous victim, but she's in the game. And then the twist at the end is, is that she's been in there as his double agent the whole time. She was already working with Jigsaw since before Saw 2. So, since before then. Okay, so this would make sense then. Yeah. All right. I mean, I still like this, I still like this between 2 and 3, but that, yeah, like mm -hmm. that, that complaint wouldn't track because she was working okay. with him before then. Uh, that said, though, if my theory about the haircuts being matching Saw 3 <laughs> is right, then... Because mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure in Saw 2 she still had longer hair, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Not that that's important here. No. But it's like, yeah, you're like... You're someone who has a child who is now like an adult themselves, right? Mm -hmm. You're maybe not quite a grandmother yet. I'm not saying, I mean, you can be a grandmother at 54 or whatever, but... Like, sure. you're someone whose kid is off to college by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so that was, like, really hard and to not notice every time there was a close-up mm -hmm. of her because it's like, yeah, I don't buy this. I don't buy this as 20 years ago. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and then to, to be fair, you know, not making fun of her for her age no, she looks no, no, no. great for yeah. you know, I, much better than i'll look at that age i am sure. not critiquing anything about her appearance <laughs> i am simply critiquing that i can't suspend my disbelief and believe that it's 20 years ago like the, right yeah big difference so <laughs> hey ho uh it is what it is but uh and then they kind of try and bring on some of her character and i only sort of remembered this in the context of when they kind of brought it up but she felt sympathy for the girl who was addicted to drugs because she herself, that's what she was punished yeah. for back in Saw 1, was that she was addicted mm -hmm. to drugs. So she has like this sympathy for Gabrielle. And I'm like, okay, okay, that's kind of coming back to me a little bit. I can kind of see what you're mm -hmm. doing there. Um, but uh, yeah, so yeah, they've got the first, so the three of them are just chained up. But uh, Valentina, the first like player in a mm -hmm. game, if you will, uh, is already set up in her, her trap, uh, which is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a razor wire is going to like pull back and cut her head off. Mm -hmm. That's like the ultimate end of it. If she can't supply bone marrow to a to a like a a tube or a suction thing, right? It's like something to hoover up mm -hmm. her bone marrow, which will there has to be an X amount of it that will tip the scales and then it'll stop the trap. How will she get her bone marrow, you ask? Well, they've given her a manual razor wire to which she can cut off her own leg and then take bone marrow mm -hmm. from her own bone. Uh, so that's... Th this is probably the most over-the-top one, honestly, in terms of, like, a gore perspective, just because mm -hmm. there's a lot of, like, you know... Obviously, she hesitates, but there's a lot of her, like, sawing with this wire back and forth to get through her leg. Mm -hmm. And you do see the leg just kind of, like, pop off and, like, you know, yeah. you see the... The stump. It's pretty gnarly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then obviously the, the the decapitation itself, and she because she basically is almost there, but just is a couple mm -hmm. seconds too short. 
see this is the problem with everyone that that's in these traps they always spend like two minutes like saying i can't do it i can't do it i can't do it and then like the last like you know minute 30 seconds being like no way i'm gonna do it and then it's like oh, there, there's not enough time at this point <laughs> i mean <laughs> i agree but as I say, I mean, I, I get it though. Like, mm -hmm. I, do you honestly think if you were in this situation, you'd be like, okay, pure logic, I have to start right away. It's just like, like you'd be freaking out, wouldn't you? No, I mean, I, I told you, I'm, I'm not doing anything. True, I'm just true, being yes. like, all right, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is it. This is the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it'll probably be at least like somewhat quicker to just have the thing decapitate me than like that's me sawing my own leg for three minutes <laughs> that's true those three minutes before she died were super traumatic whereas if mm -hmm. you just sort of waited and let your head get cut off like it would be relatively quick mm -hmm. versus all that trauma yeah uh there'd be the fear of death for three minutes i suppose that's still something but you know you can trick yourself you know close your eyes and like you know try to think of like uh i don't know one of your favorite like reruns or, or something and then by the time you get to like the really good spot you know it's like and then you're out one of your favorite reruns or something <laughs> that's so weird <laughs> why not just say one of your favorite tv shows but no one of your favorite reruns well i don't want to like you know i think it'd be too much work to try to think of a completely new episode just try to think of like a an episode you've seen before that you really liked yeah, but it wasn't a rerun when you watched it. Well, yeah, but if you're playing it again in your head, it's a rerun. It's like you're watching it for the first time in your head. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You don't have to label you thinking of it as a rerun. You're just thinking of the episode. Well, no, I meant like you're replaying it in your head. Like you're watching it from start to finish. In three minutes? So that, is it? Yeah, well, I mean, as far as you can get. Okay, but, so it's... Uh, but so it's, it, it, it's meant as a distraction, you know? Okay, all right. <laughs> you're trying to focus on something else, because otherwise you just... You know, if you just close your eyes and think, like, oh, when's it coming, when's it coming, when's it coming, then that's, like, that's not a good way to go. But, you know, if you close your eyes and think about, like, oh, like, what's that, like, episode of The Simpsons or Mad About You or Frasier that I really liked? And be like, okay, so it starts off with them doing this, and that goes there, and then... And by the time, like, you're getting really into it and, like, you're really focused, so you're not even thinking about the trap anymore, and that's when it happens, and then you're done. <laughs> this conversation's made me want to lunge towards the razor wire to end it quickly. I'll say that and That's much. an option, too. <laughs> Um, that's why i probably would say to him, i was like is there a way to speed this up i don't want to wait the, the whole three minutes <laughs> yeah just like is there any way i can like sort of make it think i'm cheating so it'll just punish me and <laughs> go for it already uh which so amanda and tobin or uh, and kramer right amanda and kramer or jigsaw <laughs> they start having a chat about him dying because she doesn't want him to die mm -hmm. right and I, I do remember mm -hmm. vaguely this was a thing where she she, you know, was worried about him dying and taking over the family business, as it were. Uh, <laughs> but as they're talking up in the control room about this, uh, the evil lady, Peterson, has... Because there's, like, a table, there's, like, a trolley in the middle of the room where all their coats and shoes and, like, her mobile phone have been put, right? Um, mm -hmm. Which, by the way, I'm just going to say... This did not look like a modern smartphone. I'm not saying that. Mm. But it did look like a BlackBerry. And I'm not convinced that in 2005, that was already a thing. I could be wrong. Mm. I could be wrong. Maybe that was a thing in 2005. But it feels early to me. Hmm. I did watch the BlackBerry movie, but I, I don't remember the exact time frame. I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. People can mm -hmm. chime in. But she... Like... The Maybe it was a Game Boy. They're, they're trying to reach <laughs> this trolley, and none of them can. It's too, it's too in the middle, it's too far away. Mm -hmm. But Evil Lady can reach the dead body of Valentina, who's just mm -hmm. died, and she like pulls her body towards her, you know, the one-legged stump, this part. right? <laughs> and she grabs like a random bit of mirror that's like, you know, smashed, that's fallen off of a wall mm -hmm. or something, and she starts cutting into the stomach, and like the other two, uh, Matteo and uh, <laughs> Gabrielle, like, what the hell are you doing? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. This is disgusting. What are you doing? Five seconds, ten seconds later, whatever it is, she pulls out the intestines, right? <laughs> of Valentina, it says, now we have rope. 
<laughs> and she throws it to one of the others, then the, he throws it to her, and then the idea is, is that they, they rope around the trolley so she can pull the trolley towards her using the intestines. This was comically villainous. And in this moment, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm kind of having a good time because they're doing a good mm-hmm. job here of setting up that she is as much of a villain. Honestly, they, they go even further with it, obviously, as the movie goes on. She is absolutely a lunatic mm-hmm. by the time we get to the end. <laughs> but this was like, oh no, this is setting up just how like batshit she is and that she's probably deserving of Jigsaw's wrath <laughs> should, should it come to her. So... Yeah. Uh, as there's a chuckle obviously uh, she starts a phone call but uh, Amanda shows up and uh, uh, jolts her with the the taser and uh, that's the end of that but uh, obviously this is all part of Jigsaw's plan but I mean probably not the intestines part he probably didn't specifically (laughs) think she was going to do that (laughs) but the idea that she would get her phone and call someone Mm -hmm. specific so they could figure out who someone is uh, was was uh, was, was the thing about Jigsaw is he's always 10, 15 <laughs> steps ahead of everyone else. 10, 15 I, feet of intestines. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll get to it. Uh, well, I kind of want to complain about it, but also I do kind of like uh, the lunacy of how this stuff works out. And it's to me, it's kind of like uh, you, you did not know like that this would specifically happen but well to i guess be fair, it's also kind of funny <laughs> to be fair i do think some of what happens at the end is kind of a plan b because he even says mm-hmm. oh this didn't happen exactly as we thought it would but he had a contingency mm-hmm. in place so yeah. you know we'll we'll we'll, 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 we'll talk about it. Uh, yeah so mm-hmm. a- after this the guy who was the previous patient who i thought might have been a plant which spoiler later on he is but mm-hmm. <laughs> he shows up <laughs> yelling outside because he's found the place and he wants his money back um, mm-hmm. Obviously, you could question how did he find this place? You know, we know how we know how Jigsaw found the place because mm-hmm. he he used his triangulation and all that. Is this guy also <laughs> as smart as that? Um, no, he he just knows where this is because he's part of the whole con. But we don't know that yet. And he but he shows up under the pretense that he's demanded his money back because he's figured out this is a sham. Mm. And Amanda, like you know, tases him, knocks him out. Uh, they tie him up. And they show him on the monitors, hey, look, we know this is a sham. This is, like, we're, we're, we're doing all this. Like, they're, they're, we're, they're getting their comeuppance, right? And he's like, why not just kill them? He's like, oh, no, we're not killing anyone today. No, 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 no. They're, they're, we don't kill. <laughs> we don't kill. Uh, so, so that's just to sell that he's there. We'll get back to him later, right? We'll just sort of mm-hmm. wait until everything moves forward with him. Uh, next up is Matteo. Um, it's supposed to be Gabrielle, but Amanda doesn't want it to be her next, so mm-hmm. they, they they do him instead. Which his thing is that he's strapped to this head device, which if it mm-hmm. shuts, it'll like sort of like burn his face alive. There's like there's like, there's like radiator bars inside it, mm-hmm. and what he has to do is very similar to the first one actually, and he has to cut something out and like put enough of it on a scale effectively to mm-hmm. get free of the trap. But in this case he has to cut out brain matter. And he's already, like, Jigsaw's already shaved a bit of his head and given him the tool to cut into it. Um, And the the sort of the way it relates to what he was doing is that he was, like, he was the anesthetic doctor, right? And it's like, you Mm -hmm. you have to do this without anesthesia kind of thing. That was, like, the whole tie back to, like, what his role was in the whole thing. Um, so we get this this ridiculous scene where he is cutting into his own skull, removes a disc mm-hmm. of his skull, and then he's trying to pull a bit of brain. And I was sitting thinking, I'm like, look, there's probably parts of the brain that you could theoretically remove, and it wouldn't cause a problem, right? As long as it's done right. safely. I'm sure there yeah. is. I'm sure. I'm sure doctors can mm-hmm. tell me there's like ah, there's, there's a bit here, there's a bit there that if you lost those, eh, not a big deal. Mm-hmm. But. He's just like blindly tugging <laughs> at a bit of brain. And all I could think was, even if you somehow do this, right, will you even have like the capacity to even reach for the key? If you put, like, once you've taken the right. brain matter out, I feel like mm-hmm. you might be out of it, if not permanently damaged because mm-hmm. you've done this. Uh, th- yeah, th- this was, th- I mean, it was gross. It was like over the top and absurd. Mm-hmm. I can give it, I'll give it that. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, this was another one I thought, like, oh, this is, like, legitimately, like, kind of gross. Like, it, it, it's making me feel uh, icky. But um, 
again, it, it did kind of like the, the trap's not bad, but it, it did annoy me a little bit that it just felt so similar to the last one. Like, yeah, it's like, okay, I, I yeah. agree with that. Yeah, so it is a bit too similar to the first one. Yeah, yeah strapped to the chair, you got to cut, you know, uh, a part of your body off and put in this thing. Like, yeah, I, I guess like the the end with the thing closing on his head was different, and you know that was kind of fun, but. Um, yeah, I like when they mixed it up a little bit. Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously there was the, there was the guy with the paint bombs, which was also different uh, before. Right. Oh, but, that's true. Uh, it's yeah. still he still has to cut something out of his body, but at least it's like, you know, he has a thing on his hand and he's up and walking around, so it's uh, yeah, at least a, a little bit different. Yeah, uh, he actually reminded me of this um, this uh, Marvel bad guy. I think his name is Razor Fist, who just has like he's just like blades <laughs> for hands. <laughs> Him, he's called what? Wolverine. <laughs> oh, right, right. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So that's that, uh, and then next up is Gabrielle, who's. I will say this is going to sound strange, but I do think hers seems more lenient, and maybe that's because she's technically the most innocent of the bunch, but. Yeah, they they have like she's she's talking with uh, Cecilia at some point, and she says, like she's like I think she says something along the points of like I never wanted to do this, like you dragged me into this, and she says something like, well, like you know someone had to supply you with the oxycotton or or something like that. So it mm. does make it seem that like, yeah, like I I wouldn't say she's like innocent, like uh, you know she still seems like she was going along like somewhat or whatever, but um, but yeah, it is a little bit more tragic if there's like, yeah, this kind of backstory where you know she is being abused because of her addiction yeah but what, what i mean is though is that like her escape from the trap only really necessitates mm-hmm. breaking some bones right. which mm-hmm. yeah they can heal and then mm-hmm. like maybe you'll be i mean don't get me wrong it looks painful basically what he yeah. does is he's got the radiation machine that you use for cancer mm-hmm. treatment up like on this uh i don't know big beam or something that was up in the ceiling yeah. and mm-hmm. they kind of like strap her one hand into a shackle and then one foot into a shackle and the one that her hands in gets raised up so she's sort of dangling in air one arm one leg kind of attached to chains and then this radiation machine is pointing right at her and it turns on and it's basically cooking her right <laughs> it's cooking mm-hmm. her with radiation <laughs> and she all, all she gets is like a, it's like a crowbar to like just mm-hmm. break her ankle and her foot and her, uh, her mm-hmm. hand sorry to try and look for your hands uh, and feet from the shackles. Like you said, very painful, but it does seem like that would be slightly easier than doing anything that would involve like cutting uh, like stuff off. Or it feels less permanent. Into. Yeah. Like, yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like, the radiation may cause some permanent damage. Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but like if she started whacking away quick enough, uh, mm-hmm. well that's the thing uh, evil lady says hey do your foot first because oh. then you'll swing out of the way of the radiation so she does she will she whacks her foot repeatedly until her foot breaks mm-hmm. and then she pulls her foot out and she like, sort of swings because now she's only on one mm-hmm. chain but then the radiation machine just goes <laughs> and points right at her again I thought that was quite funny <laughs> yeah and that's actually something that was kind of interesting too like I, I guess it's not completely new like we've had other Saw movies where you know, there have been multiple people like in traps or, or talking to each other, or whatever. But mm. I think it's a little different that you have, um, yeah, like they're all in the same room so that when it's someone's turn to play the game, like the other people can kind of shout advice or whatever, especially. Yeah, that's a little bit different. You know, yeah, especially with like Cecilia, because I'm guessing either, <laughs> I'm guessing maybe because she's like so sadistic uh, that she seems to know like the best ways to get away with like hurting yourself or, or whatever or like maybe she can kind of think a little similarly to uh jigsaw that she knows like no do this and then yeah i mean it was a solid bit of advice but jigsaw had obviously accounted for such a, an yeah. event because uh, i was thinking the same about that because when she said that about the foot i was like yeah but if you break your hand first you'll fall to the floor and you'll equally be out of the path mm-hmm. of the the radiation so yeah. i mean I, either one would have worked so I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, plus, there's always that thing where I'm like, you're going to have the strength to do it a second time because once you're in that much pain right. and you've suffered all this right. radiation, it feels like you might be a bit weak mm. to uh, to break the another limb to get to get out of this predicament. But to her credit, she does it. 
Yeah. And yeah, and when she does get out, like immediately, well, this is the thing, the pipe bomb guy earlier, the taxi driver, who mm-hmm. he gets the information from, he does succeed. He gets the pipe bombs off, he throws mm-hmm. them away, and he like ducks for cover. And Kramer just immediately walks in the room with a med kit and is like, okay, let's, get, let's help you get patched up before you go to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing here. He comes out of the room with Amanda and he's like, okay, Amanda, get her to the hospital. It just so mm-hmm. happens that this is when the other guy that showed up, um, who they've freed from his restraints, mm-hmm. has went for his gun again and is now going to hold them at gunpoint. And it turns out that not only is he part of the con, he's romantically involved with Peterson, the evil lady. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they are, like, a fun, villainous, uh, couple, and, uh, I, I do like how, like, Jigsaw and Amanda, like, they both legitimately care about <laughs> saving this woman that they, you know, were pretty much just trying to kill, but, like, <laughs> uh, you know, th- th- they're so, like, you know, like, hard about their rules that they're like, no, she she survived the game. She has to live. We have to get her to a hospital. Yeah, um, and then evil lady just shows how evil she is by crushing mm-hmm. her neck to kill her. It's like, whoops, <laughs> I don't think she'll make it. I'm like, oh, okay, now we get to just enjoy whatever Jigsaw does to you. Now we now yeah. we get to just relish mm-hmm. in it. Um, <laughs> what, so one thing we didn't really mention earlier, right, and this is important for what's about to happen, is that mm-hmm. we mentioned. I mentioned there was a young boy at the compound, right? Mm-hmm. And there was a scene before Jigsaw got his treatment. There was a scene with this young boy, uh, sort of with a hammer, trying to hit his his bike, his wheel. He was trying to like fix his wheel, and Jigsaw realized what he was doing. And it cuts to a scene where Jigsaw's got the wheel in a vice, and he fixes it for him, and notably mm-hmm. learns how to say "pull" in Spanish. Like, how do you say "pull"? Uh, mm-hmm. And he learns that word, and it's like, okay, fair enough. He did something nice for the kid. It's showing you Jigsaw as an ace caring man which is again kind of weird <laughs> given all the stuff that he does mm-hmm. but he's got this weird moral code whatever this evil lady when they hear this kid outside hitting the ball against the wall mm-hmm. she decides to bring the kid inside and use him <clears throat> to mess with jigsaw and by this point jigsaw has been strapped to like the trap she was strapped to amanda's been strapped to one of the other restraints and mm-hmm. it's like okay there's this trap that she was meant to be a part of which is this sort of table that's got two parts to it and two levers and they strap up the kid and the other thing and i thought this was genuinely an interesting predicament to put jigsaw in where mm-hmm. they're forcing this on a purely innocent person as a child so it is someone totally because as far as i can remember jigsaw never went after a kid like he never <laughs> <laughs> he never put a kid in a trap right <laughs> that would be funny just like you know little billy you stole uh tommy's power ranger figure and for that <laughs> so they're like hey you're going to explain the rules to him and all i'm thinking like mm-hmm. he doesn't speak spanish you dumb bitch like he can't explain the rules to him, even if he wanted to mm-hmm. but she's like oh if he can't tell him the rules then that's a bit unfair and then she's like mm-hmm. hey i re- when i realized you were jigsaw i was like oh boy He's like, we con Jigsaw. We, well, look at us, look at us go. Um, she's rubbing it in his face. He's begging her not to do it because the boy's innocent. Like, if you want to kill him, fine. But like, this is, you know, this is just evil. Yeah. So I, I have a lot of questions. Uh, so first of all, I know it, it's probably not that big a deal, but just like, it seems like this has kind of been going, I, I would imagine that, this has been going on like all night. So I, I feel like it's pretty late. Like I was thinking like, I mean, it's gotta be like mm. midnight or later. So like, why is this kid just <laughs> kicking a soccer ball? Like against this, like, you know, wall, like that late at night. I mean, it's a fair question. I don't know. Mexico's <laughs> different Tim. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, maybe, you. maybe they started real early and it's just going faster than I thought. So maybe it's only like seven or eight o'clock, but to me, it, it just felt like this is super late um but then yeah it, it's it's so funny that um they have the upper hand they could literally just kill them right then and there but instead like you said that they're, they're so over the top evil that she's like wait a minute i'm gonna go kill that kid in front of you because like that's funnier uh to me or more specifically um, she wants to put jigsaw on his own trap right mm-hmm. which i think is what's interesting about it is that you've got this trap that's kind of designed for two people where mm-hmm is this table that basically waterboards them with blood, but there's a lever for either person mm-hmm. which will tip it, and when it's tipped in their direction, the other person doesn't get mm-hmm. waterboarded. So Jigsaw 
this actually, I, I can't believe this came back as well as it did, but he says don't pull. It's the one thing you can say in Spanish is mm-hmm. don't pull. So when the table goes up and he like pulls his lever to, so that he's the one. So Jigsaw is selfishly letting himself potentially be killed here to save the kid. So if you weren't rooting for Jigsaw by this point and the movie's working extra hard, like this woman's <laughs> evil, Jigsaw's a hero, he's trying to save the kid because he will save someone who's innocent. Like they're really going out of their way to do this. And then it's almost a little touching that the kid realizes what's happening and still <laughs> chooses to pull the lever his way to try and save Jigsaw. And then Jigsaw yeah. pulls the lever again, but then holds it in place so the kid can't put it back that way. And Amanda's yelling, you're killing him, please stop, you're killing him, because she really cares about Jigsaw. Like, mm-hmm. for all this weird warped, like, moral, like, center and, like, the ethics mm-hmm. of all the characters involved, the movie has kind of stuck to its own logic with these characters. Mm-hmm. It's set up that she cares about him. It's set up that he has this code, that he does help mm-hmm. innocent people. It's shown you that with two people who have survived these traps where he's like, okay, now they're to be helped. Mm-hmm. Now they need medical attention. Um mm-hmm. the the whole time though when this was happening, I was thinking, but wait a minute. This trap's for two people. Who was supposed mm-hmm. to be on the trap with her? That was like mm-hmm. a valid question that I had in my head the whole time. And it's not mm. until these two characters go up to the, the, the room because they're looking for their money because, you know, Jigsaw found the big bag of money at her place. They've got it upstairs. <laughs> and the guy's like, hey, the money's up there. Let's go get the money. Because at a certain point, he's kind of grossed out by how extreme all this is. So he's right. like, I'm going to go and get the money. And then she follows oh, him up. You don't want to watch a bunch of blood uh, <laughs> being poured into a little kid's mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I know. For, for all his faults, at least he's got that going for him. <laughs> uh, and then when they go to grab the bag of money on the wall, they pull it, a red light turns on, there's a timer behind the bag, the door locks shut, and the dan 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 starts playing. And it's like, this is the plan B, uh, which is triggered by them trying to take the bag of money, uh, which is that there's actually releases on the locks that Amanda and Jigsaw know about, and as soon as this all starts happening, he just clicks a couple of things on the lock and it just opens. So does she. They get the kid and then they look up at the, the room and watch as this all happens. It gets filled with gas and he explains to them, you two have been working together to con people. Now you're going to have to fight each other. Uh, they're supposed to love each other, but there's only one like hole to stick a head out so they can breathe. Mm-hmm. And they start fighting over it to the point where evil lady ends up stabbing the guy and... Uh, and you know even though her, her skin's clearly badly burned by the end of this because the gas is like chewing at her but mm-hmm. uh yeah so i don't know I, like as far as the convoluted this is the big twist at the end moment goes mm-hmm. this is definitely not as silly as some of the ones we've had previously i'm oh, sure don't yeah. get me wrong jigsaw had to be able to even though it's plan b is the contingency mm-hmm. It still had to like he still had to like sort of predict so much stuff to have this kind of ready to go, but you know there, there's part part of me that's bothered by that and part of me that's just like I I'm kind of having fun with the outlandishness of it, like it, yes it is very over the top and it, it and it's just kind of a, a trope I hate whenever there's like you know the the really smart guy that just always plans for everything like I mean there's definitely times when it's done very well and believable but <laughs> he's the batman of serial killers <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> he's prepared but for every eventuality it, like it yeah like i mean there's a lot of good instances where, where you know with like batman stuff or something where it's like oh, okay i can see how he was thinking ahead but then there's instances like this a lot of the times where it's just like there's no way he would have known characters would have done this or that or whatever but uh, again i'm kind of having fun with how over the top it is i, I think and, what makes it work is that just forgetting like the logistics of the trap itself these two mm-hmm. characters, especially the women, have proven themselves to be so evil, and she was just, mm-hmm. like, gloating that she outsmarted the famous Jigsaw. So, mm-hmm. even if you have questions about, okay, how did they plan all this, you still get some enjoyment out of the look in her face as she realizes that she's just right. been conned. Like, she's fallen for the trap. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the from the second where, you know, she's freed and Parker reveals himself, you're just waiting for the shoe to drop and... Uh, for them to get their comeuppance uh and then i do think it was actually you know funny um where you know they're doing the saw thing uh where you know okay the trap is set and now we're gonna like look back at how some of the stuff happened and when they whenever they would go back and they would have uh the little stuff that they said it to each other like the when the guy says like i would die for you or, or whatever <laughs> 
or like like I was like, all right, this stuff is like kind of funny. <laughs> Yeah, that was the thing when when she was revealed to be this much of a villain and she gets freed. She's like, "Oh, all mm-hmm. I could think is you were making all these people kill themselves." Was it? Oh, it's less people I have to split the right. money with. <laughs> yeah, like she's just <laughs> maniacally evil. Like, yeah, I, I I do have another question too. Like again, not like a super big deal, but I was trying to think. Like like you said, she's like, "Oh, like I outsmarted the world famous jig like Jigsaw or John Kramer or whatever." And I was like. Did people like know who John Kramer was? Well, no, like, I, in... I I don't think they know who John. I don't think they know John Kramer's Jigsaw. I think she knows mm-hmm. it's John Kramer, but then she realized he is Jigsaw. He is Jigsaw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know when he started doing all the Jigsaw stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, she even makes fun of him and does like, like you're not going to say your thing before we start the the game. Do you want to play a game? You're going to say it. <laughs> like she is I... mocking the shit out of him at a certain yeah. point. Like, uh, on the one hand, it, it kind of feels weird to me because I feel like in other movies, like, characters didn't really seem to know, like, exactly who this guy is and, and stuff. But, uh, if I remember uh, correctly in the first movie, mm-hmm. it, it was like a spree that Danny Glover was, like, investigating and the papers mm-hmm. were calling him Jigsaw. So he was like a, you know, it, it was in the papers, but, like, Jigsaw Strikes Again kind of thing. Yeah, I feel like I mean again, maybe I'm wrong. It's not like I, I, I mean I you know don't watch these movies that often, but like I I feel like there's not a lot of instances where like y- you know if someone was that famous, you'd think when which arguably uh, yeah, if this was happening in the real world, like this would be someone that everyone knows about. But I I don't feel like there's not a lot of instances where people wake up in the traps and they're like, oh no, it must be Jigsaw. Like y- you know what I mean, like. Uh, I don't know. No, I agree. I, I don't remember a lot of that. I mean, I'm sure it happened a little bit in some of those movies it must have yeah. done. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I, to be fair, like it was at least, like even in the first movie, it was already kind of like a mm-hmm. like a legend of like Jigsaw's doing all this shit. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, enough. and and uh, probably don't want to skip over my, my favorite line in the, in the movie too. Oh, go when on. The tra- when the trap starts, uh, I think Cecilia says something like, waterboarding but with blood bloodboarding <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like, and, and again she's like such a an over-the-top villain that is just very funny the way she delivers it i don't know Tim. it sounds like you had more fun than you were letting on i, I mean it, I, if you break it down with these kind of parts i i do think the stuff we're talking about was legitimately fun but it's also a two-hour movie and there's a lot of stuff in between that i'm just like all right get to the point and like yeah, a lot no, of bullshit that comes with it maybe part of it's because <laughs> my expectations were so low but i felt kind of like mm-hmm. mildly positive about most of this like not nothing like i'm not sitting here saying oh it's like <laughs> like oh so i so mm-hmm. put a uh, classic and now it's like mm-hmm. you know like most of the franchise is shit but this one entry is <laughs> like you know a must-see movie or so it's not like that i but... mean in terms of the movie, I'm mildly negative on it, but in terms of the franchise, I'm like pretty positive <laughs> about it. Like it's, it is a step up from. Uh, okay, I'm just you know, I'm pretty much most of the other movies, but you didn't say what I thought you were going to say there, just because you're phrasing it differently. Because the mm-hmm. way you said it there made it sound like you're positive on the franchise. Because I thought what you were going to say is, in terms of this movie, I'm mildly negative, but in terms of the franchise. I hate it because you hate the franchise. <laughs> but I know what you mean. You mean in the context of the rest of the franchise. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I... Yeah, I, like... I, I guess, like, just... It, it was less obnoxious than most of the other movies, right? It felt like it slowed itself down, and I appreciated that. I felt like by giving John, like, a revenge element on top of everything else and have given him, like, a villain that we can actually root against... It, it really did feel like, hey, people kind of want to root for the killer, and we can maybe kind of do that with him, because he's got this kind of... As, as, as vicious as he is with his traps, there is kind of like a code he has with them, which mm-hmm. is different, because you can't really... You know, you can't make Michael Myers the protagonist of your movie, or Jason Voorhees, mm-hmm. right? It would, it would be very difficult anyway, and probably <laughs> end up being a mess if you tried. So... Well, I, I mean, I think... I mean, I, I agree. Like, you can't make them, like, the outright hero, but I do think as those kind of franchises go on, you do start to like root for them in a bit where it's like, yeah. Oh, like I'm excited to see this killer and see him kill yeah, these I, people. I mean, but it's a trope of slasher movies typically to have at least a few characters who are unlikable. So you can just enjoy mm-hmm. that they die. 
But you're typically meant to at least want the final girl to survive and maybe a few mm-hmm. other characters. So, whereas this is a yeah. little bit different, where the further we get into it, like, I mean, I, I mean, I'll give it this. I can't think of another horror movie where the main character is technically the killer and one of his motivations in the final act of the movie to beat his antagonist is that the antagonist murdered one of his victims who he <laughs> wanted to save because she survived. Like, you know, let's think of how complex that is. He, he put this girl in this trap, she survived, and now he wants revenge on behalf of her for being killed by someone else. <laughs> That's actually kind of fascinating as a like a character if you really like want to play with it i mean i'm not saying this movie goes that above and beyond with it because it doesn't but it it is surprisingly competent like compared to the rest of this franchise this is a surprisingly competent movie uh so yeah basically the like i kept expecting the cop to show up that works with him right obviously he called him earlier on because mm-hmm. he's like hey detective look into some stuff for me but you don't see mm-hmm. him i i kept thinking that's how they're going to get out of this he's going to show up and shoot the bad guys or whatever <laughs> uh, it never happened but at uh, the end of the movie uh basically john amanda and the kid just walk off uh, <laughs> and and then the white uh, the screen fades to white and the big saw 10 title comes up which again felt mm-hmm. really weird and tonally different to the rest of the franchise but mm-hmm. there is a mid credit scene where we appear to be and back. Oh, don't yeah. forget, too, that they also gave, like, I don't know if it's all of it or just a lot of it, but they, they give a bunch of money to the kid. Yes, yes, they give him a big bag of money. Uh, and <laughs> Sorry you got bloodboarded, but <laughs> here you go. Yeah, Jigsaw puts his arm around him and says, you're a, you're a fighter, you're a soldier, or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but mid credit scene, we appear to and be... You know what? They can actually, uh, you know, <laughs> if they ever you know, go back to the present day if they need, like, a new jigsaw. Oh, the kids. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, he'd be, like, 25 now, so... Yeah. <laughs> why not? Uh, so, anyway, <laughs> mid-credit scene. We seem to be back in the, the bathroom of the first movie because the lights turn on in the same way, and it's actually the guy from his support group who sort of, like, gave him the first seed to, like, go down this this path. Clearly, that's, like, the, the part of this whole con group's plan is that they plant someone in their circle that can like say hey i got better and it's kind of the start of the con job um this guy's strapped up and jigsaw is like standing next to him and then the detective from like saw three four five some you know those movies roughly uh Mm -hmm. he's there and he's like you con the man you con turned out to be jigsaw (laughs) that's bad luck uh so we don't I mean, really... he says like that's epic bad luck <laughs> <laughs> yeah that guy was never the best actor let's, just, <laughs> let's be honest but uh, we never really quite see what the trap does we just it's got like spidery legs it's like it's a contraption it's it looks got, like, like it's tickling him <laughs> yeah but presumably it's going to cut into him uh, mm-hmm. but yeah so it's just the mid credit scene is basically just saying no we didn't forget about him the guy that started all this he gets his mm-hmm. comeuppance too so very good I guess um yeah yeah it's 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 a decent movie i'll I'll recommend mm-hmm. it over dark harvest i'll recommend it sure. over last voyage of the meter i'll recommend it over i don't remember any other shit movies we did in the last few months <laughs> but you know I mean, it wasn't a great year <laughs> it wasn't a great year yeah like the bar is certainly lower mm-hmm. uh but and maybe the expectations being so low obviously helps it because I mean, yeah, the expectations were absurdly low. I mean, I can't think of many, you know, franchises that, you know, the tenth entry is like <laughs> the best one. I mean, yeah, we, uh, I mean, we both like Jason X quite a bit, but yeah, I wouldn't say that that is the best Friday the Thirteenth. But no, I mean, I like Jason X more than this though. But you know, that's oh sure, yeah. Very different strengths, mm-hmm. shall we say. I mean, the 10th Halloween is the second Rob Zombie movie. That's definitely not the best one. Ooh. Uh, I couldn't even tell you what happened in the 10th Children of the Corn. I've not seen them. We have to do them still on the show, so I've not seen most of the sequels. Mm. Uh, 10th Hel- Hellraiser? Hel- Which one was the 10th one? Was that the new one, or was that the 11th? I don't remember. I actually don't know. I think the new one might have been 10th. Yeah. Which was... I mean, they're all shit anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the it was bad. Well, 
I, I mean, I didn't like the newest Hellraiser, but I mean, I, I would say it, it was a lot better than most of the, you know, straight to DVD sequels. But I mean, nowhere near as good as the like, yeah, you know, original. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about Saw franchise setting a low bar. Those Hellraiser sequels were set an even yeah. lower bar. <laughs> Right. <laughs> like, I, I would say even the worst Saw movie is better than, like, Hellraiser, uh, like, uh, pick, pick one between five and ten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I can't argue with that. Yeah, that's, oh, that's a rough, that's a rough time. I, oh. I, I'm trying, I can't really think of many, many other franchises that go that far. Texas Chainsaw, has that had ten? Nah, not quite. No, I guess about, maybe eight. Okay. Sounds right. Yeah, I think 2013 was the eighth one. I could be wrong, okay. but I think it was the eighth. So yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. All right. Well, we, I guess we're at the ratings then. What were you rating Saw 10, Tim? Uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I, I legitimately wish that, that I did like it more. Uh, I mean, again, in context of the franchise, I you know, like this a, a lot more. Um, yeah, the, the most of the other movies, um, uh, you know, like we said, the, the it, you know, it does something interesting where it, it's bringing in, you know, people that are, you know, easily hated and despicable and it's fun to, you know, see Jigsaw go up against them. Um, one thing I, I think I'm complaining about, you know, with the past movies is just how dreadfully serious it is and, one thing I would like these movies to do is mm. to just em- embrace like the goofiness and the stupidness, uh, stupidness oh, yeah. more. I mean, I mean, yeah. if nothing else, the half hour at the start where it's this old man dying mm-hmm. of cancer and looking for a miracle, miracle cures, it's hardly adding to the fun vibe of the right, whole experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I mean, you know, maybe some people like that it is, you know, like very serious and, and gritty or, or whatever, which is fine. But uh, I just, you know, since I think the movie's already kind of stupid anyway, uh, I I think I would enjoy them more if they embrace that quality about them and you know it weren't trying to be so serious. But I mean, with that being said, though, I I think there were actually some legitimate moments where I laughed in this movie, which I I don't think I've done in many of the the previous ones. Um, and and yeah, the and again, like you know, some of the traps were fun and some of the gore was all right. Uh, so it, 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 it's definitely not the worst watch and it is like better, if not the best, uh, of the franchise, but there's still just a lot of stuff that's not doing it for me. Uh, yeah, I definitely think it was too long. Uh, I, yeah, I, I didn't think it just like cinematography wise, like I didn't think it looked great. And then, uh, like you said, like there's some style stuff, uh, like they're not doing as much as like the kind of like shaky like you know turn around real fast stuff that you know they do earlier in the franchise but uh, i mean i I still just don't think it it looks great and um but i mean there's enough fun to be had that it it's not like the worst watch but i I still just wasn't blown away so i i think i'm gonna give it a a four which is probably a lot better i mean i don't remember other scores i gave for the other movies but it would definitely probably put this like pretty high uh in terms of the franchise if not you know the highest uh it's an improvement but it's still not quite there for me it doesn't make me super excited for saw 11 but it doesn't make me completely you know dread (laughs) its anticipation um who knows, maybe this one's a little better, maybe the next one will be a little better, <laughs> maybe we'll get to a place where I can be at peace with the franchise, but uh, step in the right direction, but I still don't seem to be totally uh, on board as some other people have gotten with this one. For the record, um, you rated 1 a 5.5, you rated 2 a 5, and you rated 7 a 4, which you've tied this with. The rest of them are underneath mm. a four, so mm. that's that's where you are. <sighs> I mean, I, I don't even remember what happened <laughs> in seven. I, I I I would have to probably watch them all <laughs> again to really compare. Which and then, it's not going to happen. That's yeah. to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, for for me, I think obviously the, the raw concept of saw. Mm-hmm 
is probably more executed in one and two mm-hmm. but i think objectively this one does more better character stuff and actually mm-hmm. like the idea that like jigsaw's challenged in the way that he is by the end of the movie even if he's got a secret plan the whole time to kind of win anyway uh, is at least narratively kind of interesting uh it didn't annoy me as much it maybe is a bit too long but i do think at least some of that time is spent setting up character which is which is good um some of the, the gore was was good so yeah like i think i think there's enough here for me to say this is okay and okay means a six out of ten oh, wow so i i do think four is a bit harsh on this one but it's you know like i'm not saying it's it's, it's a good movie because that would be more of a seven but I think it's okay. I, yeah, I think I, there's enough things that I wouldn't say it's on the bad side of the scale. So, mm. there you go. <laughs> uh, it's tied for second uh, based on our average ratings. Tied with Saw 2. Mm. Saw 1 get a 5.25 because you rated it 5.5. <laughs> mm. So, there you go. Yeah. I mean, if I had to rewatch, I don't know if I would go up and down if i was forced to watch any of the movies again like probably one two and in, in this one would probably be the ones i would mm. most want to watch <laughs> um, well technically that would be yeah. the continuity as well because this is set after two yeah. so you, you technically be going in order of mm. uh of events i'm kind of curious what wh- which one seven was that i seem to enjoy it slightly more <laughs> than the other ones was that the one like one where he's going after wasn't there one where he's going after like insurance people or something that uh, doesn't even sound familiar so i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm trying to think if it was like a bunch of insurance people or if there's just like one crooked insurance guy but i feel like there's one where like jigsaw was going after the healthcare system that maybe uh i was kind of like hell yeah but um <laughs> i don't yeah i don't fully remember um, yeah i don't know i don't know yeah um but hey ho that's uh that's saw 10 everyone i mean i'm not crazy about it but <sighs> your your score might put in the eligibility for the uh best of <laughs> 2023. Actually, we'll have to find out it may actually 2023 was not a good year and in fact our next episode will be our attempt at doing a best of 2023 list normally it's a top 10 i genuinely don't think it's going to be a top 10 this time i think it's going to be a top five because I think if we had to put in 10, I think we'd be straight up putting up... I think number 10 and 9 would be movies we just don't like. But they're just mm-hmm. not quite as hated as the other stuff that we watched. And I think that's a problem. I don't think there's a point in doing that. I think you you cut it off before you get to bad movies. Because otherwise... Mm-hmm. I mean, you're still ranking stuff, I suppose. But it's not, they're not in the best of the year. You know, they're... they're it's it's a rough, rough go. So... You don't want to do a top 7? I don't know. <laughs> no. Uh, so it'll probably be a top five. Uh, as per usual with these over the last couple of years, uh, we'll have the regular episode where we present the list that we've made together, but patrons will get uh, an even more uh, bonus where they'll see us actually make the list. So uh, that'll be one of the perks on Patreon uh, in the next couple of weeks. But uh, yeah, that's what's coming next on the show. But let us know what you thought of Saw 10 in the comments below. Mm-hmm. Like, subscribe, all these usual things. Ding the bell for notifications. All these things do help. And as I said at the start, you can get bonus stuff over at Patreon. Even more screams at the $5 tier and up. We do a couple of segments of that a month where we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll maybe rank something mm-hmm. or we'll have a news topic we want to talk about or we'll talk about some trailers, whatever it may be. Uh, all patrons though get the bonus episode which happens once a month every month there's a, a week where the episode is exclusive to our patrons and youtube members and uh yeah so yeah the last one we did of those was, was uh rabid grannies which was uh <laughs> which was a hoot so mm-hmm. uh, t- tends to be weirder more uh b-movie stuff that we'll, we'll throw mm-hmm. in there um as for the plan going forward on the show um we have a vote winner after the top five but then after that uh, we'll be kind of focusing on 2024 movies and we'll be trying to sprinkle in some sequels to stuff that we've been working on for, at this point, a few years, actually. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, the, the 2024 movies, surprisingly, are already starting to pale up. Uh, we're only in March, so uh, that'll be that'll be fun. Uh, so, 
Thank you very much for joining us. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies. And we will see you next time.